Jerry Brown here with Jerry Brown Travels. Lori here. Well, Lori, where are we at now? We are taking it out board. Oh, that is a tricky word there. <laughs> we're going to spell it out here so you know where we're, where we're at here. Wow, we really messed up here. It's actually Mexico's biggest holiday besides Christmas. And we did not make any reservations to come here. And when we came to this little Pueblo Magico, there was no hotels. Man, we were panicked. What are we going to do? We're gonna to have to sleep in the car or what's gonna happen? We actually drove out of town eight miles to look for another place. Well, we found one hotel out there and they wanted $200 a night. We came back into here and we were looking at uh, hotels that we found a room here would be about $300 a night. We didn't want to spend that. So then when we came back, the lady felt sorry for us and she gave us a room for $100 a night. So man, I'll tell you, we messed up, but we recovered. So that's one of the difficulties of not making reservations. We left Bernal and it was only 35 miles to get here, so a very short drive. A little update. If you've been following our series, Traveling Through Mexico, we have driven 932 miles. We've looked at seven different cities, some Pueblo Magicos, and we've been on the road for six weeks. Our next destination shortly will be Mexico City. Hey, welcome to our room. We have two beds here. And then also we have a dining table here. And I come over here. This is the place we're gonna set up our kitchen, right? So, this is the kitchen area. I want to interrupt this video. At the end of the video, I want to go over our expenses. Our last video, we told of what our expenses were traveling in Mexico. People made comments saying, you're spending way too much money on hotels. And they gave us some suggestions about using Airbnb. I want to go over that with you. Well, this morning when we walked out of the hotel and got outside and boy, it was cold. I had to go back in and get my scarf because it's 50 degrees now, and uh, but it's warming up. The sun's now picking up here, but it's beautiful. It's so clean, blue skies. What I really like about this town is the back streets. Very narrow, beautiful back streets. Cobblestones on the, on the street, sidewalks, everything is clean. It's so exciting. You see these colonial homes, the colors, the plants, the bougainvillea. Definitely check out the back streets because you'll be surprised how beautiful they are. I like to come to this alley like this, you know, a small alley and they have a lot of little, little shop and I love shopping and I like to buy some of uh, my knickknack or some of my gifts. I like this similar, like, like a, it looks the same like Cambodia, you know, um, design. I have one over here. It's a pays about the same price. Oh, gracias. Gracias. See? I got one. That's my knickknack. <laughs> Lori, what is your first impression of the Pueblo Magico here? Well, every town I go, it, my impression is so clean, so nice, so friendly. Yeah, and my impression of this Pueblo Magico is that each Pueblo Magico is different. And as we travel around and checking out more and more, 
they have their own charm. They have their colonial background, their colonial history. And uh, so it's not like we have one special one because they're all special. We go to one and we look at it and we say, wow, this is great. And we go to the next one and go, wow, this is great too. <laughs> and, and they get, you know, it's like, wow. There's a lot of wows when we go to Pueblo Magicals because they are so beautiful. We had an early breakfast, so now we're hungry again. We're gonna stop and have a little second breakfast. Lori is having homemade tamale and cacao to drink. And I'm just having homemade carrot cake with a fresh cup of Mexican strong black coffee. At the end of the video, also, we're gonna discuss traveling as dummies. We're gonna go over how you can travel as an older person, or maybe somebody who has no experience in traveling, and what type of tools you can use, such as Google Maps, etc. Stay tuned for that. Okay. It's amazing. Everywhere we go in this town, the street was so clean. The streets are clean. The sidewalks are clean. The town is clean. This is really beautiful here. got to take you to the Mercado. This is where all the vegetables, fruits, and little restaurants are. This is how a uh, kitchen are. I have my a hot water pot to make my coffee or tea, and I have a rice cookie, cooking. I have a rice cooking to make my cook my food, my soup, my rice, and then also here I have this my pantry locket here. So right, that's her little kitchen setup. Yeah. What so are we I'm, gonna have for dinner? What are we having for lunch? Well, I'm gonna have a chicken soup today. And what am I having? You have your torta. Okay, torta sandwich. Good. Mm -hmm. I have my chicken soup now, and Jerry gonna have his torta chicken. Mm, that's the best soup I make it today. <laughs> what I do is I pour the crumb in the toilet. I don't want to get this thing get stuck in. Okay, couldn't find a Dairy Queen here, but I'm trying this. You know, I got balled out the other day. Somebody wrote me and they said, why are you wanting a Dairy Queen when Mexico has the best ice cream you can get? But what I've found is that they mix it with a lot of water. They don't use butter fat to make it very creamy like that. So this is a special one. I've never seen it made before. And uh, so it's, Vanilla, chocolate, and banana. How's it taste? It, it doesn't have that creamy taste to it. Mm -hmm. And that's why I guess I like the uh, Dairy Queen. I'm a simple guy. Dairy Queen is just fine for me. I like when I walk around here, I see some of the art gallery is so beautiful. Yeah, their artwork is unusual and uh, different because they you know, each region, they, you know, specialize in art in that area. And so when you travel around through Mexico, different regions, you'll see different artwork. Well, because it is a small town and you have time with you visit here, you may want to set up a tour to go see the vineyards or how they make the cheese. 
that may give you a little bit more activities to do. The cheeses here are really special. There's a, quite a variety of different cheeses. You may want to go and have a cheese and wine tasting uh, restaurant and you'll be able to tell for yourself the different types of wines. You know, they do have vineyards here, so they're growing their own uh, grapes and producing their own wine. Well, this area is also known for its opal mine and precious stones here. And uh, so that could be another activity that you do is set up a tour to go see some of the opal mines. Here we ending the day with a delicious dinner at an elegant restaurant, beautiful music in the background, Very and the good. food was excellent. Huh, Lloyd? Excellent? We did get a lot of comments about our last video on what we were spending, and people gave us some good recommendations. So let me go through some basic numbers with you. On a weekly basis, it looked like we were spending, for total expenses, that's driving through Mexico, all uh, expenses, uh, gasoline, toll roads, food, entertainment into uh, uh, maybe museums and stuff like that. And that was $1,015 for one week. Now let's look at what we were spending for a hotel per night. We were spending $103 per night traveling in Mexico. That would be using regular hotels. Then the recommendation was, why don't you use Airbnb? Okay, let's look at that. Let's say we took our number, $103, cut that in half. So let's say now your Airbnb is gonna cost you $51.60. So what you can do, you can shave off of the bill that we had at $1,015, and your cost per the week would be $963.40. That's a very realistic number. Calculating that, again, we have total expenses on a day-to-day -day basis and a weekly basis. And so that does seem a lot high, and it does. And we were surprised when we added up the numbers. We didn't know that it was going to be that expensive. Well, things have gone up. Mexico's not as cheap as it used to be. So Give me your comments and let me know other things, how we could save money as we're traveling. Through. Oh yeah, another thing. People ask me, are you still making phone consultations? And yes, I am. Every Tuesday, I set aside Tuesday to take your calls wherever we're traveling. So if you need some information about Mexico, I definitely know I can help you. Don't go part two, traveling for the dummies. And this is so our little blurb on traveling for the dummies. And Lori and I, we say we fit in that category. Believe it or not, you may think that we're, you know, know all this stuff about technology and all that stuff. We don't. We make YouTube videos and, and that. But all the technical stuff, you know, we didn't grow up with it. And so we've had to learn it ever now, since. Remember, this video is not for you that knows all this stuff. I'm talking about the person maybe that's older, maybe they're just getting acquainted to uh, uh, these type of uh, tools that are available on uh, the smartphones and that. That's who I'm talking to. So for you that know all this stuff, how to book hotels, you know, to pay your bills online and do all that stuff, it's not for you. You can actually uh, cancel the rest of this video out. But for you who are challenged with using the tools and you're a little intimidated and you're afraid. Of it. Well, it is a learning curve. That's for sure. And uh, you'll have to do a little bit of homework, but I know you can do it because if we're doing it, you can do it. So we have an iPhone and on the iPhone, it has Skype and it actually will, you can put in there and you can say, Skype, tell me the weather and it'll tell you the weather where you're at now. You can put in there things like Skype directions to Mexico City from Guadalajara. It'll actually pull up Google's Maps and show you the direction there. Siri, directions to Mexico City from Guadalajara. Getting directions to Mexico City from Guadalajara. So what has come up on my phone here is actually the directions. 
on Google Maps. I did not even have to go to Google Maps and put it in. Siri connected me right away. And so there's another feature that we use, which is uh, Google interprets, translates. Yeah. Translates. Google, trans Google translates. And this is fascinating. I didn't know this till yesterday. Lori was showing this. We were in a restaurant. She literally takes out her phone. She takes the menu. She takes a picture mm -hmm. of the menu. She then sends it over to Google Translates, mm -hmm. and it uh, translated it from Spanish to English. Amazing. And so we're using tools like this, you know, more and more, because it is a challenge. And again, one of the tools would be Google Maps. Google Maps is sort of a necessity for traveling, especially if you're driving. My recommendation is you definitely need two people, one a navigator and one the driver. And the navigator will looking at the map and it'll guide you. Now you have the voice part of it turned on. So it's giving you voice commands, which are saying turn right, turn left. And uh, then this way the driver can hear it, but also the navigator is able to tell, you know, where to go. Now, if you're not familiar and you're not convenient or you don't know how to use Google Maps, what another tip would be, learn where you're at. So if you're wherever you're living, in other words, you know the neighborhoods, you know everything, and do a test run. Say you want to get from point A, which you know, to point B, which you know, and then go through the process of driving and listening to it and seeing what the uh, the way it works. This will help you a lot. A lot of other things that you can do with Google Maps, you can go to YouTube and put on there a tutorial how to use Google Maps and it'll show you. Now, you can do that on your phone or on your uh, uh, laptop. The laptop has a lot of conveniences using Google Maps because you can literally say where you want to go. So you want to go to one location, then you want to go to another location, you want to go to another location, and so on. And it will actually route it out for you. It'll tell you how many miles or kilometers, how much the toll roads are. And so it helps you and assist you to come up with your budget also. And again, like I say, this video, this part of the video is made for the dummy. You know, we we admit we don't know a lot, you know. Be part of the dummy. Yeah, we're part of the dummy category here. Now, if you are afraid of traveling in Mexico or any other country, these tools are really a great asset to have. It's amazing mm -hmm. the technology that you can get here. As, that I use uh, uh, Siri a lot. So as an example, I'll wake up in the morning and I'll say, Siri, what's the weather? It's currently cloudy and 66 degrees. Siri, is it going to rain today? It doesn't look like it's going to rain today. <laughs> you see how how it's telling me? It knows my location, our location. Another way you can use Siri, say you go in a restaurant and uh, you have a special diet that you want. You can go in there and you have to say this. You have to say it, prompt it. You say, Siri, in Spanish, I am lactose intolerant. I can't have dairy. It'll actually translate it and it will then, uh, the people then can see it and, and they can read it and they can hear it. You can ask Siri a lot of questions. It's amazing. If you have an iPhone, then you can use that device. I'm not sure how the Andro Android works with uh, Google. I think you probably can use the same type of a system with them where you ask it questions and it will answer you back. So uh, it's a great tool. I use it all the time. If I'm going into, let's say a hardware store and I need a step ladder and I'll put in there, Siri, in Spanish, step ladder. It will say it in Spanish. It'll write it in Spanish and it'll say it in Spanish. So the person can read it and they can hear it. Cuts through a lot of frustration. Use that tool a lot. We do on a day. It's a learning curve, definitely. All this stuff is a learning curve. And, uh, but you can do it. If you want to step out of your comfort zone, you want to travel more places, and you want to feel more comfortable. 
the more we use these devices, the more comfortable we get as we're traveling, okay? And just keep practicing, practicing, maybe a month or so before you actually make the journey down here. Don't rely on one person. Share the responsibility with two people. It does make it a lot more fun. Oh, yeah. It does take the edge off of, of traveling mm -hmm. because you feel more confident. Yeah. Because uh, we don't know the language, and it's a way to do that. Now, the other one, which everybody knows about, is uh, Google Translates. And that, you can text in there a question, okay? But if you're like us, we got big fingers, and we don't text so well. So when we're texting, we're going like A, B, C, whereas the young people are... Well, whatever age, but people can go in there and they can go like this and they can they can even talk and text at the same time. Because, again, this is for somebody like us that has difficulty with that. Then you can use the interpret and you can actually talk into it and it will then translate it in Spanish. It'll say from English to Spanish, from English to French, from England to whatever language you want. This way, you can use it any place that you want to travel in the world. Uh, that's a great tool to have. It's just a matter of getting it out of your pocket and using it. That's one of the things that we're learning is we have to remember to use it. And this way, it keeps us from getting frustrated uh, with our travels. Let's say you check in a hotel and you want two beds. You want it, most of the rooms are going to be non-smoking. You have certain criteria you want. You just type that in, hand it to them, and they can read it, or they can uh, it'll spell, it'll sound it out to them in Spanish. Yeah. That's I'm not saying it's easy, easy, easy. You got to go. You got to go to maybe uh, tutorials. You got to look at how to use it. Practice, practice, practice. Well, I Next week we will be going to Mexico City. Come on the adventure. We're still traveling throughout Mexico. And we want to show you the different parts of Mexico and experience traveling for six months with us. We are excited about showing you all of Mexico. If you would like to book a phone consultation, see the box on the left, book now, click on it, and it'll send you over to a booking site.